Happy Tuesday! This is Miss Shannon, and today I'm going to read Chapter 5 of Big Nate in a Class by Himself. Chapter 5 I'm in an awesome mood when I walk into homeroom. Not because of homeroom. Only a total geek would get all pumped up about that. Homeroom is my favorite part of the day. See? It's my fortune that's great. It looked like today was going to stink out loud and now everything's completely turned around. What are you so happy about? Francis asked. I just got some amazing news, I tell him. Have you ever heard me say I'm destined for greatness? You may have mentioned it once or twice or a zillion times, he says, rolling his eyes. Well, this proves it, I say, handing him the fortune. Francis reads it. He's making sure he's his constipated. I'm not so sure about this face. Hmm. Surpass all others, he says. Surpass them in what? I'm a man of many talents, I tell him. It could be anything. <laughs> Francis hands me back the fortune. Not anything, he says with a smirk. We can eliminate academic achievement as a possibility. You're a riot, Francis. Just for that, I might not include you in my posse when I get rich and famous. It'll be great to be rich. Then I can pay people to make my life easier. A chauffeur to drive me around, a brainiac to do all my homework, somebody to buy all my clothes so I don't have to go to the mall and try on pants in one of those cheesy little changing rooms. I hate that. Don't come in. And I'll get a chef. Somebody to cook all kinds of good stuff. I'm starving right now. All I've got in my stomach is a couple of spoonfuls of lumpy oatmeal. Hmm, I guess I could eat this fortune cookie. It's better than nothing. Munch, 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 munch. Mrs. Godfrey needs eating something. Gina. Oh, how I hate her. Is this true, Nate? Mrs. Godfrey's voice cuts right through me as she heaves herself up from her chair. Uh-oh. If Mrs. Godfrey catches you eating in class, it's an automatic detention. Pretty bogus considering she keeps a stash of peanut butter cups in her desk. Don't ask me how I know that. I have my ways. Yikes. She's moving fast. Come on, chew. Swallow now. Phew. Just in time. I choke down the last few crumbs half a second before she steams up to my desk. Gulp. Open your mouth. Ah. Uh, hmm. She says looking long and hard. I don't see anything. You must have been mistaken, Gina. Tough toenails, Gina. What? Ha, Gina's speechless. Her little plan to land me in trouble didn't work. How sweet is that? Attention, please, for this morning's announcements. Oh boy, announcements. The excitement never stops around here. Students interested in joining the math team should see Mr. Staples. Yes, because I just don't have enough math in my life. Today's lunch is beef stew, green beans, cornbread, and fruit cup. And all four of them taste exactly alike. If you visit the library today, wish Mrs. Hickson a happy birthday. She's 39 in dog years. Thank you and have a great day. That's it. Homeroom's over. So why am I still sitting here? Because homeroom with Mrs. Godfrey is followed by first period social studies with Mrs. Godfrey. What a brutal way to start the day. Now I know where the phrase rude awakening comes from. After social studies, there's nowhere to go but up. Here's the rest of my day. Period two, English. Miss Clark is okay, but shouldn't someone who teaches 
English actually makes sense once in a while. For a non-restrictive clause or phrase, but not for independent clauses joined by coordinating conjunctions. Say what? Period three, art. This is my favorite class. Mr. Rosa is so burned out, he doesn't even bother with lessons plans. Now that's teaching. Here's some clay, have fun. Period four, lunch. You eat, you eat as quick as you can, then you spend the rest of the time checking out girls and throwing carrot sticks at Brad Macklin. Stop it, you ruffians. Period five, gym. When you're playing floor hockey or dodgeball, it's awesome. When you're doing rhythmic gymnastics, you pray that nobody's around taking yearbook pictures. Period six, math. Here's a multiple choice question. Is math A, totally boring, B, completely clueless, C, a great place to grab an afternoon nap, D, all of the above? The correct answer, of course, is D, which was also my grade on the last test. Period seven, science. The highlight of, my, of the year was when Mr. Galvin's dentures fell out during his lecture on earthquakes. That's when I gave him the nickname Shifting Plates. I give all the teachers nicknames. I know, everybody invents funny names for teachers, but I work at it. That's why I'm the official nickname czar of PS38. A good nickname has a lot of stuff going on. One of the, my all-time best nicknames for Mrs. Godfrey is Venus de Silo. I got the idea from a famous sculpture called Venus de Milo. Venus was the goddess of love and beauty. Mrs. Godfrey isn't loving or beautiful, so that's what makes it funny. Venus is also the name of a planet. Mrs. Godfrey is a lot like a planet. She's huge, round, and gassy. A silo is filled with feed for cows. Mrs. Godfrey reminds everyone of a cow especially when she's eating. Moo! And that's only one of her nicknames. I've got tons more. In fact, I can tell you exactly how many as soon as I check my list. Godfrey nicknames. One, Godzilla. Two, Boring.com. Three, Pass the Gravy. Four, She Who Must Not Be Named. Five, Dragon Breath. Six, I Can't Believe She's Not Butter. Seven, dark side of the moon. Eight, extra crispy. Nine, there's no place like homework. Ten, ozone. Eleven, queen kong. Twelve, gas station. Thirteen, big bang. Fourteen, animal planet. Fifteen, wrecking ball. Sixteen, dullapalooza. Seventeen, el guapo. Eighteen, pardon my nachos. Nineteen, jaws. 20, Venus de Silo. 20 nicknames and counting. Not too shabby. <clears throat> I'll take that. Yikes. Busted. She looks at the list for a long time. Her face turns red, then white. I can see her jaw muscles working. I wait for her to start shouting, but for the longest time, she doesn't say a word. She just looks at me. That's worse than shouting. Finally, she speaks. Very impressive. She crumples up my list, then she opens her desk drawer and pulls out a pad. I've never seen that pad before. <clears throat> she writes something down, then hands, then hands me the slip. I notice a tiny smile at the corner of her mouth, but the rest of her looks mean. Take this to Mrs. Sirwicky at the, at the end of the day, she tells me. Detention report. Student Nate Wright. Teacher C. Godfrey. Reason for detention? Insolence. Insolence, I say out loud. What's that? Here's a dictionary, Mrs. Godfrey snarls. Look it up. <sighs> flip, 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 flip. I bet it doesn't mean destined for greatness. And that is the end of chapter five. I will see you tomorrow with chapter six. Have a great day. Bye.